Hi guys, today I decided to do a video for this 7.5 Honda outboard motor. I believe this motor is produced somewhere around 1977. So, a uh, few important things that you have to know before you buy any motor like that or if you decide to do any repairs. Okay, I will start with the first thing is going to be the carburetor. Take a look at this carburetor guys. This is a strange carburetor made by Honda back in the time and you can take a look over here, take a look. This is the line that separates the carburetor. So the floater is inside here and the fuel level is somewhere up to, to this point. So if you open the carburetor once, you can probably damage the gasket. There is no way to find a replacement gasket for this one. You can buy a carburetor kit. There is no parts available for this carburetor. I see people they are trying to do their own gasket from silicone or some other materials. It's not working. This is number one. You can technically rebuild this carburetor because there is no parts available. Number two. Take a look at these guys. So this, this is a kind of push rod that controls over here I can sure can you see it uh, so this controls the main jet when you push it you're going to release the fuel to the main jet and the engine will start but if it's in this condition you can start the engine so on this motor I have missing the part that push the entire system here okay so the only way to fix it I got this little bolt over here and here this is the connector when I have the connector you can see now the main jet is open when I disconnect it will close right away the main jet and the engine will turn off if you decide to burn all the fuel by the end of the day okay, you can burn the fuel because at the moment you're going to disconnect the connector from here the engine will turn off you're gonna have a fuel inside the carburetor you're gonna have a fuel into the fuel pump and this is the fuel lines you can open this valve and drain the fuel from the carburetor it's gonna leak out from here but this is not enough because you still have fuel inside the fuel line and the fuel pump so what you need to do here you need a connector you can cut the holes like this and you can completely remove it so at the end of the day Disconnect your fuel tank and just connect the connector without any fuel supply and let the engine burn all the gas from the fuel lines, from the fuel pump and from the carburetor. This is important. Keep your carburetor and fuel lines empty. <coughs> If you guys leave any fuel inside, you may have a problem next time to start the engine. Okay, so I covered the fuel part. Now I'm gonna go to the ignition. Ignition on these motors are tricky. I see people are suffering to find the spark on these motors. Well, here is the secret. First, this model, it is with ignition points there is no CDI inside take a look so this is the ignition points you have a condenser inside too and you have a one single coil that controls two spark plugs I will have a picture or some kind of drawing or probably picture showing the crankshaft on this engine so you have a crankshaft and you have the two pistons that they're moving 
up and down simultaneously. So, one of the pistons it's going to be in a position to compress the fuel and the air and we'll wait for the spark and the other one is going to be in a position releasing all the exhaust gases. So, when, let's say, when this piston is going up and the spark must go here, this piston on this cylinder is going to go up too. The difference is this is going to be with open exhaust valve and those cylinder and this cylinder the two valves are going to be closed. It's going to be in a compression cycle and this is going to be a cleaning cycle. Both cylinders they're going to receive a spark at the same time and only this one is going to ignite and nothing is going to be affected in this one. It's going to receive the spark the exhaust valve is going to be open and that's it. So, what's going to happen after that? This is going to create the, the ignition, the piston is going to go down, this piston also is going to go down. Then this piston is going to go up and it's going to open the exhaust valve and it's going to start releasing the exhaust. The same time by going down this piston is going to open the the intake valve is going to be open, it's going to take air fuel mixture and it's going to start doing the compression cycle. It's going to get another spark, but it's going to receive a spark and this is going to create the ignition in the working cycle and this is going to be in the exhaust. I hope you understand guys, so this is important. To get the spark on these engines you must have both connectors connected. So what some people do, they remove this spark plug and this spark plug. And they're trying to rotate the engine and they're looking for spark. No, you never get the spark. You guys are going to say, oh, the coil is bad. I need to buy a new coil. You're going to start taking the magneton pieces and you're going to go around, going to look all these cables and going to try to find the problem mm -mm, there is no problem just this is the nature of these engines they're create to work like that one single coil controls two spark plugs but to get a spark you need this one connected and you can remove this spark plug and have it over here and you're gonna see a spark when you start rotating the engine. If you remove two of them, there is no spark. If you have one connected and chase the other one for a spark, you're gonna find it. So don't waste your money buying a new coil or waste your time trying to open the magneto. Most of the time, there is no problem. Most of the time, it's just people they don't know how these uh, coils are working and how to get the spark when I got this engine the two spark plugs was disconnected that was removed someone trying to find the spark give up I say there is no spark I can fix it and that person I let this motor go because they don't know Okay, one more important thing that you have to know guys, this is also extremely important. Okay, take a look at this hose guys. This hose provides the water straight from the impeller, all the way up here to the head. So take a look how deep is the the cooling part of the cylinder so this is only the cooling part of the cylinder take a look inside guys no there is no cooling part so technically this engine 
receives cooling only on the top of the cylinders and the heads and this is the uh, exit for the water and you're gonna see water coming out from the part over here Okay, uh, now you know a few of the secrets of these motors. If you decide guys to buy any of these outboard motors, um, keep in mind they are good motors definitely, four stroke good motors, but keep in mind you can find parts for the carburetor to rebuild the carburetor. Back in the time I was thinking to uh, get another carburetor but I, I never go that far away don't forget for the ignition don't spend your money right away buying a coil have I'm repeating myself have one of the the spark plugs into the engine have the connector on top remove this one have it over here and then turn the engine I guarantee you're gonna find the spark if you remove both spark plugs at the same time and you're trying to find the spark, there is no spark. Thank you for watching my videos. I will try to give you more detailed information for different motors that I have to repair. Uh, if you decide you can subscribe to my channel, I believe I can give you interesting information with the time thank you very much and have a nice day bye bye